When it comes to making a video game from scratch, compared to what becomes the final product, there's a lot that's removed, altered, changed, the works. And a huge chunk of that we really don't get to see until the months and years roll on by with more and more info about the already completed project. In some cases, companies don't mind sharing the creative process when it comes to designing the game from the ground up, in terms of how a level was made, what pushed this idea to become this character, or how a composer orchestrated the music. Sly Cooper is rather open on what became the series. I mean, in the third game, there's a special video in the game itself called The Evolution of Sly going through the different phases and the creative process on how the lovable raccoon thief went from a pretty pudgy animal with a magical ice cane named JT to the charming agile quitwit Sly Cooper. Now for Sly fans alike, most have seen this extra video, and of course, if you haven't and are interested, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Even still then, they of course don't go over everything that was changed from this series. When it comes from the video, the biggest matter that was cut was the famous Monaco level in Sly 2, possibly the only world that we know of that was fully in development, even had a mission where Bentley would crash a yacht into a casino apparently. I remember in this level uh, we were going to have Bentley steal a giant yacht and smash it through all of these docks and eventually uh, bash it into that large uh, building which was a casino. But it was cut from the game. Why? Don't really know. However, with how much was completed at the time, this would lead to many fans to speculate that Monaco would have been the second episode for Dimitri, seeing that he's the only Claw Gang member not to get a second episode, and the real location is close to Paris. And from the fact to make up for this, there's a comic that's a collection of short stories. One of them is The Gang in Monaco, where Dimitri is a prominent character there. And even after the actual episode, where does the gang go? Monaco. So yeah, it seems that there were some big plans for that place, but alas, no Monaco means less Dimitri. Truly a sad time. Now this isn't from the evolution of Sly, but another point I find extremely fascinating is the alternate version of the Sly 3 opening. Yeah, there's a different opening. It's what I call the IGN intro. It starts off with Sly on the ground, all beaten up, going through the same dialogue from the final game. I find this super interesting because I think I can craft a theory on how Sly wound up like that and where they would put this in the game. So stick with me here. It looks like Sly came from an explosion of some sort because he's smoking, but nothing really from the game itself would really indicate that. So what I think this was supposed to be is when Sly was thrown by Dr. M's monster in the last episode of the third game. Because not only is he beat up, there are some small skid marks on the ground like he was thrown, eh? See where I'm going with this? He's also in a spot that's close to the shore of the island where his body did end up. And I'm guessing his tattered clothes are from him fighting the beast because he does do that. So instead of barely getting crushed to death by the beast, he would be thrown, then the flashback kicks in, and then the game really starts out. And when we return back to this point, it can be right before Sly conks out because immediately after that, Sly did pass out. That'd be quite the opening to the third game. Think about that. Game theory's got nothing on me. Now, of course, I spent a few minutes just theorizing on just those two points alone. And mind you, those things were just cut from the game. Just two things. There's legit a plethora of different things to talk about. Though we would be here all day going over every single detail change, I knew a good amount of this information beforehand, especially from over the years of being a fan. But that was stuff that I had access to, like the internet. When it comes to things I don't have access to, that's where the alpha and beta models of the game come into play. There's a bridge between these two elements, that being this weird one-off video that's like 14 to 15 years old, where it's Bentley in a blue void interacting with a bunch of objects and hazards, and ends up with him getting hurt most of the time. I'm guessing to test out various animation and how things work, so that's cool, I guess. Again, there's a lot to go over from each game, so not to really waste time, but I'll be going over more of the fun and interesting moments cut or changed from the games. I'll get this out of the way right now. 
some of the removed or altered jobs from Honor Among Thieves, specifically nearly all of Venice, my god, it's nothing but a huge shitpost basically. From the fact that most of the jobs are changed a lot, along with the first job, Police HQ. Originally, you would go to the police station, chat with your good old friend Dimitri, eavesdrop on the police, free him, get chased by Inspector Fox, and then find Murray to ultimately have him say, I've got other stuff to do first, sorry. The first idea for the mission was going to be go to different pizza joints to find Murray, because food, and also get a sense of the hub world, which is where some of the hazard room moments would pop up here, like navigation and camera work, slightly leading to the idea that the hazard room in general was kind of a last addition to the game. But each time you get to a new location, you pretty much piss off some guard and you're about to get jumped. And Sly seen Jujutsu Kaisen and wants none of that. Eventually you do find Murray and he pulls the biggest old man Captain America I've seen from anything with spot on voice acting. Hey, you're the guy that interfered with my sign work. You're not getting away that easy. Murray, we could use a little help here. No, I'm not going to help you with violence. It's just too good to make up. There's another job that would involve Sly and Bentley doing some classic pickpocketing to get to controls of the Ferris wheel and destroy it, as well as doing this baseball mini game, and it kinda sucks from the look of it alone. This would also be used for the first job in episode 2 to climb your way up to the Guru. In the earlier build though, they would have actively gone out of their way to destroy the Ferris wheel, as opposed to just doing it on a whim. I'm kinda glad they did change it, because we would have missed out on this glorious line. Look away if you must. You're about to witness the dark side of electrical engineering. And I suppose the last thing to really talk about that's engaging are the voices and how the characters probably would have been portrayed differently if they didn't make the final changes. So for example, Sly in The Thievius Raccoonus was a little bit more snarky than usual. Not in terms of just to his opponents, but to Bentley of all people as well. Instead of just the casual dry humor they usually have, Sly would just shoot Bentley down. And it's honestly pretty funny. Man, those rats got pegged. How extraordinarily unsanitary. I'd hate to be the janitor around here. Raleigh appears to have booby-trapped this entire place. You know, I think I'm gonna enjoy this. Don't you get it, Sly? If you step on that rug, forget about becoming a master thief. You'll be a master dartboard. Wow, Bentley. Was that a joke? No, it's a fact. No wonder I didn't laugh. Wait a second. What if I jumped into that barrel for protection? I don't know. It looks pretty risky. And unsanitary. Only one way to find out. And another thing that went through the most changes was that of Murray's voice. You know that slight list that he kind of has in the first game? Well, there's a pretty odd explanation for it. Listen to this. This is from the voice actor of Murray, Chris Murphy. One sheet of paper for each character, you know, a little picture of the character, um, the whole list of things about his personality, um, one of which was sexual orientation. <laughs> and I remember Murray's as being, like, experimenting or something like that. Are I, you serious? I don't remember that, but I believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, pretty yes, awesome. I, I am serious. As, that's what I remember. And because this is the only way I think I came to the original voice that I used in the audition. So I'm thinking, okay, well, here's a big gay pink hippo with a little <laughs> vest and no pants. He's got a little, you know, little raccoon for his friend here and, <laughs> and some of the dialogue was you know it was like hey sly like that and there were oh there were, wow <laughs> there were a couple other ones there was like i forgot what it wasn't i carumba but it was some other like you know say, saying like that um really like kind of elongated out on on you know on the page so you know i figured i would just do a voice like this <laughs> hey sly that kind of a thing and, uh, that's what 
got me the part. I got the part based on that. Um. Uh, so, so you came up with this voice, and then was there was it, and then that was it. So, was it? So yeah. So I got uh, so I got cast based on that voice, and uh, we started recording, and we got part of the way through, and uh, I guess uh, Sucker Punch decided that that it was just too gay. They're like, there's you know, there's gonna be like twelve year old boys playing this. We shouldn't have like a hugely gay character on here perhaps maybe you know, the, we should uh the issue that was explained to me wasn't that it was too gay is that people didn't get that he was gay that they that they played it for um audiences and testers and all the teenagers are like oh yeah he's supposed to be like um uh what's the dinosaur the big barney party. barney this tyrannosaurus is, rex yeah <laughs> oh dear god closer <laughs> velociraptor oh yeah i get it he's supposed to be like he's supposed to be like barney right and they're like no he's supposed to be <laughs> Ambiguously gay. So I don't see how that doesn't mean that he sounded gay. Yeah, that's true. He's supposed to be Liberace as Barney. <laughs> is that the, is that yeah, the idea? That's it. So that really? so then through that testing, they realized that the messages were getting mixed, and they went back and said, "Let's have you do something else." Oh, so as it turns out, then it wasn't gay enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, there's also this rumor that Chris actually would have been recast because in Band of Thieves, he couldn't quite find the macho superhero-esque personality in Murray just then, and they did try other people to fill in, but they couldn't do it as well. So Chris got the roll bag and he was hitting it this time. There's like two to three different versions of Murray's voice in the second game alone. Now, most of everything I've gone over was from the trilogy. Is there anything from Thieves in Time? Uh, no, not really, honestly. There's some concept art here and there, like Carmelita in different outfits, and all I have to say to that is, hashtag not a furry, maybe. Some more art of a mouse-type villain that was going to be used for the medieval episode and was going to be the villain then, but they changed it to Penelope. And good on them, because that decision went so well. And I think that's really it when it comes to uncut content from Sly Cooper. Granted, I've legit only cherry-picked a handful of moments and elements from the series. I've talked about a third, if not a fourth, of the many things changed. You know, besides like Carmelita's voice. Like there was going to be a helicopter job in Paris that would take you all around the city. Or that flashlight guards, especially ones with guns, would fucking two-shot you. Which would also lead to certain power-ups, being that you could upgrade the gang's stats, in a sense. Like Sly and Murray could do more damage permanently, or get more health added to them, or take less damage. There's a lot, of course. An absolute extreme shout out to Gyo, I hope I'm saying that right, and Sly Cooper Reloaded, and the many others who've helped them gather all this information. Both of them on their channels have a library of all the topics I've brought up within this video, and if you're even more interested on the things I haven't talked about, or just want to know, if you just want to know more about it, Go to those two channels and you can find some other stuff if you just kind of look it up on YouTube, quite frankly. You could even watch an entire episode and its prototype build from the second and third game. It's intriguing stuff overall. And I think that's really it this time. So yeah, Sly Cooper just has so much stuff that really didn't get put into the final version of the game. And I think it's super fascinating to look into that sort of stuff and just like all the fun and dumb details that was added like you know the stupid baseball game or you know certain lines that were changed and dialogue that just wasn't added like this one this one's fun that's it i knew she'd have a bad mojo collector to transport the overflow what's a bad mofo collector so uh yeah uh i think that's about it uh you know again go to these two channels if you want to know more about the uncut content or just things that were altered removed all that stuff have fun searching with that let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh you know what to do with all the links that i provide and everything sort uh thank you for watching that's greatly appreciated of course have a great day have a great night and everything else you know what to do